Today we will assemble the mod shock system um, Big Bore version 3. So they already iterated on two versions before this. So first of all it's Big Bore uh, and most of you think the original shocks are Big Bore as well. Well if you compare them I don't know if you can see it here but it's actually quite a big difference in volume here in the diameter. Um, if we look at the pistons you can clearly see uh, they are of different sizes here. Uh, the white one is the original ones. Uh, and then we have a little interesting system, the mid bypass system with small valves here that can close these small holes. Uh, and we'll get into those details as we assemble here. So let's just keep on um, starting from the right, I put all the pieces here on the table in front of me. So let's see with the cap here. I have a little screw here, the overflow screw. So this little finicky, uh, put that here. And as you see, they're all kind of red and gunmetal, I think they call it. This is kind of a dark reddish color. Um, I would have preferred to have the whole system in just gunmetal. That would have looked awesome, I think. But this is pretty cool too. So after that, we put the O-ring inside. And remember, this should go inside, not outside as some have done before. So put it in here. And then that is pretty much done. And we can put that to the side here. And then we get into this little chamber here where we have some O-rings, uh, ceilings, and we will have the shock shaft go through that. And we start with putting this o-ring and now this time that goes actually on top of this so like that and then we're going to put this these uh, black rubbery sealants here they're not really o-rings they have a little uh, profile and to uh, get this you should have a little oil here actually on there and kind of just squeeze it in there really get it lubed up you put that in here after that you put this uh, white disc on top of that and then you have just an, exactly the same one as you put before that little black one and put some oil on that I have the same kind of oil that i've put into the shocks after i've assembled it so there you go, it's, it's all in here. Uh, and then you put this white disc on top of that. And then you have the cap here. And this is really nice, an aluminum. aluminum. Uh, the original is in uh, plastic. This in, is in, in nice red and tighten that and that feels perfect. So already there you have a pretty nice uh, shock body ready to uh, put the shock uh, shaft in there but we need to put the piston on this one so let's put that uh, on the side in here we have a lot of different small uh, uh, so we'll start with putting a washer here you can't even see it it's really small and then the piston and there's only one way you can put this really if you want to be uh, clear it's just like the washer fits in there yes you can see that and then we put these valves here and as you see I put two here um, with the uh, shock system you get a little uh, paper saying uh, what valves you should use for front and rear and if you use long or short arms and if it's the buggy or the truggy uh, or buggy or the truck <laughs> no truggy here you put them there 
and then there's a little special black washer with a little um, indentation a little uh, what should I put profile on it oops dropped it there uh, and there you go so that's uh, fits perfectly there uh, if we can get uh, the camera to uh, focus on that one uh, but I think you understand it uh, the valves on there and then that washer to hold it do down a little extra washer there and then the locking nut right over there perfect and then tighten that with so how, how does this MIP bypass system works well really um, when the uh, piston goes down into the body um, oil will get through these small holes here uh, I don't know if you can see them uh, wow well, not that good uh, and it will lift up these valves so some oil will uh, sit through uh, and that is really when uh, the shock is in rebound uh, and when it gets the other w direction it's actually in the active phase uh, the holes are closed so I'll put this through here so when it gets in that direction the holes are closed and then rebound they're opened and these valves control how much the holes are opened and how much oil gets through there pretty nice um, I haven't tested it yet so uh, that will be interesting to see you have different valves so you can try different combinations and here you can really see uh, that the piston is doesn't really have holes in it because it's irregular irregular shape uh, not completely circle uh, so it has small um, air or, or small pockets here that where the oil can get through that's how it works okay um, well that's it. Uh, you should really put some some oil on there, or in, in the bodies, of course. Uh, you can screw that, uh, and then you have the uh, ring for the spring, and you put that O-ring inside this one, and you have it there because you want to create some friction here so they don't kind of unturn themselves while driving uh, and this is a little bit tricky to get on here you really need to uh, press it hard and then start turning and after a while that uh, starts catching on yes and now it works and then you can turn and turn and turn and turn and i won't bore you with that so really we just have three more uh, pieces to go here um, and it's the last it's the rod end here of course uh, we have this plastic piece and uh, what's nice here is that you have this aluminum ring that you put it on here uh, so that the springs um, can uh, are more secured because the springs are a little bit bigger than the original springs uh, since this is a big bore system with the uh, little bit higher uh, larger diameter so we need this little aluminum ring here to uh, um, uh, adjust for the right diameter and also these uh, springs are nice you get a little uh, shrinking uh, plastic tube Part here this is the blue one so you have different colors depending on what the spring rate uh, and the whole system comes with seven different rates four in the back and three in the front I think or if it's the opposite uh, that's really nice so you have a lot of different options to play around with out there so uh, I already prepared a uh, already assembled shock here uh, as you can see it's all screwed together really nice uh, this is not filled filled with oil yet so i'm going to do that 
so I really like the premium quality and the finish of these uh, they look really nice um, looking forward to try them out uh, in the field so um, interesting and see how the MIP bypass system works and um, if the car will handle better in the end of the day where the uh, track gets gets blown out uh, big holes the back of the car kicks like a mule as I um, usually puts it um, that's where I want these to start making a difference after finishing assembling the shocks I noticed I had four o-rings left actually uh, it's the same size of the o-rings as I have inside the cap here I figured maybe they were like spare o-rings but then I contacted Matthew Olsen of Mod Racing and asked him where these are supposed to go and actually this is interesting because they will go outside here on the shock body here so outside here uh, I know a lot of you you know have uh, learned that they should go inside here I told you that earlier in the video and you've seen it online but so with this construction you actually have one o-ring on the outside of the body and you have one o-ring inside the cap here so that makes it a really reliable uh, seal uh, in both ends